Next gen We're fam. live. What's Next gen on, fam. How are we doing? Happy Tuesday afternoon or evening, depending on where you're coming in from. J Man, how are you feeling? Next gen fam, there are a lot of entrepreneurs that Dylan and I uh, look up to. And uh, Ryan, who we're going to speak with today, has been on our radar for quite some time. Uh, he's been trying to steal our job and, and start his own next gen. Obviously, you know, next gen is next gen. It's a pretty, pretty tough to battle against. But this guy has done an incredible job mm -hmm. mentoring, investing, and advising in many uh, young entrepreneurs across the world. So we're pumped for this conversation. We had a lot of folks tuning in. Shout out mom. Shout out grandma. Shout out Ronnie. Shout out AG. Shout out Jenna. We got a huge squad and, and one next gen in particular, I got to give a shout out to making this possible. Joel Hanson, I hope you're out there, man. I know you're going to catch this later. Thank you for bringing us together. We're going to talk about all of the work you are doing with Ryan and team in just a little bit, but we are fired up. Joanna and Marlon from League of Innovators. There is so, such a squad here that Ryan has amassed. No doubt they're all incredible people because of who brought them together. Hey Amen. Shout out Swish. So many in Canada. So many. Of, oh my uh, goodness. Ryan's network. But y'all, let's get to it. You guys know him. He's pretty famous. He's got a, a newborn baby. <laughs> it's crazy. There's a lot going on. Ryan Holmes, co-founder, first CEO of Hootsuite. We're talking about startups, marketing, tech, everything about being an entrepreneur, especially being a young entrepreneur. Ryan, please come on and join us on the Next Gen HQ Momentum Audio stage. Gentlemen, pleasure to be here. What a build up. I'm so excited. Let's do this. <laughs> Brian, you are the man and we are honored. We're gonna dive right in with the heavy hitting questions. For those who don't know, one of Ryan's earliest ventures, I believe his second maybe formal business was a pizza shop. So Ryan, Justin and I were coming in from New York City. Talk to us about the best pizza that you've had and what Ryan's dream pie has on it. Give us the details. <laughs> oh man, that's, that's a real tough one. I've had so many, it's hard to name, you know. If, Travel through Italy and, and some amazing pies. They're always, you know, the, the OG. Um, you know, live in Vancouver, and uh, there's a there's a place called Parlor in Vancouver. Shout out Parlor. My mm -hmm. my wife and I are absolutely addicted to their uh, their pies. They do like a, an incredible jalapeno kind of uh, mango pineapple. I know pineapple. Since you say pineapple, you lose half the audience because that's like a real uh, a real religious war there, but. Uh, yeah, I, they're, they're, uh, their pizzas are pretty incredible. They're my top top pick right now. Next Gen Fam, we're going to link it in the show notes. The secret is out. Pineapple, for those who want it, Next Gen Fam, we're a pineapple, we're a pineapple company, at least uh, over here uh, on, on this neck of the woods. Ryan, we bring in a lot of entrepreneurs um, to speak to our audience, and so many of them were starting companies at an early age. Even though that company didn't evolve into being their grand success, they had that entrepreneurial bug. We joked about here, pizza, you, paintball, pizza, a lot of very interesting ventures that you had going on. Take us back to that point in your life. When did you start to piece together that you were an entrepreneur? Obviously you're being born and, and raised by entrepreneurs. Talk to us about growing up in that entrepreneurial environment. Yeah, you know, I think that that is a big demystifier for a lot of people when you're when you're raised by somebody that's entrepreneurial, you 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 get that kind of look under the hood that other people don't get. You know, if you're if your mom's a, a you know a doctor and your and your dad's a teacher, you don't understand like what entrepreneurship is about because they just have their day jobs and you know it's hard to get that that uh, understanding. So my mom started me off um, doing uh, window cleaning and I wanted some dollars after school to go play video games, like quarters. So I'm dating myself, right? I need some quarters to go play video games, right? And um, she said, well, if you want to get some get some quarters, you got to start washing the windows at her store. And then she said, oh, I could go you know, talk to her next door neighbor and see if they wanted some windows washed. So that was it, you know, like demystifying it, starting with a real small business. Uh, and then going from there, you know, I did the, the paintball field you mentioned, uh, was my first real business, I'd say, you know, I started that when I was 16, um, and an incredible journey and you guys have nailed it. Like when I go and talk to entrepreneurs and, and I always do a straw poll on these established tech entrepreneurs and other folks. And I just ask them, well, how many people have started a business when you were, you know, in your teens and, and it's always such a high number. So there's a real indicator, I think. Um, that, that uh, you know, people get in going early, they, they get a feel for it, and, and it, it's an addictive thing. I love that. Ryan is talking, Next Gen Fam, about getting started, getting in the game. Anybody who listens to our stuff who is in the Next Gen aura, you understand, just get started. It's okay if it's a paintball company, a pizza shop. He's a tech entrepreneur, but you might not have known that at 15, 16, 17. Ryan, I think you are the perfect gentleman to ask this. 
Do you believe entrepreneurs are born or made or anything else out there? No, I, I think they're made. I think most often they're self-made, right? And and you got to get out there. You do it. You guys are talking about this, like taking that first leap. It's it's like it's scary. You know, like when you you know, I dropped out of university to go and start my pizza restaurant, which was like a double you know scary whammy thing. Made no sense, you know, in, in retrospect, like what was I doing? But anyways, I did it. And and the learnings you get out of doing that. Um, this is the most exciting time I think in the history of humanity to be an entrepreneur. You, you have incredible platforms where you can reach a global audience like Shopify and others. You've got um, the ability to market to people anywhere around the world, collect payments, you know, all this stuff that, that was un, unheard of. You know, I was, I was stuffing brochures under, under car windshields to get exposure on, on my businesses. You know, in this day and age, you can get in front of anybody on the planet through Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. So best time ever um, to, you know, start your full time or a side hustle just to, to get your feet wet and, and get into it. And, and Ryan, that trait of being able to go for it, understanding that there is risk, you're not going to have all the answers, but putting yourself out there, we have seen in your career time and time again, having to do it pizza in college, but also I want to zoom in on invoke, you're running a digital media agency. And Hootsuite is is birthed out of it. And there was a pivotal time in this uh, you know, career where you decide, all right, we're doing Invoke, but we're gonna dedicate a good amount of our team to start working on this, this concept you've built maybe internally called eventually turned into Hootsuite. And that was a pretty big risk and moment of you as well, diverting attention and resources. So uh, help us understand what's happening at that time. What are you working on? And how do you know you're, should, you should go to Hootsuite? Okay, so yeah, I just wanna give a little bit of backstory to Invoke, because it's a bit of a jump, right? And, and I think for people that are listening that are trying to wrap their head around the, how you make these successive leaps and, and kind of build on your, your last victories and, and successes or learnings, you know, I took the restaurant, ran it for a couple of years, learned a ton, sold it in 99, 2000, and the web was starting to take off. And I was always fascinated with computers. Uh, I, I self-taught HTML, CSS, like hold up for like six months and just like went down the rabbit hole. And, um, you know, did that. I got a, I scraped together a portfolio, got a job at a dot com. The dot com imploded six months later, just learning, learning, learning while I was there. And then I started Invoke, which was an agency. You know, it was a hybrid agency. I didn't even know what that was at the time, but I was building products. And I was doing services work, right? Doing the services work, customers bring you in ideas, problems, you solve them. We would um, retain some IP and often resell the solution to other people. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it, it sounds like I started an agency, like I, I really bootstrapped this out of my, my bedroom and, and like built it, built it, built it. You know, I, I hired an employee, I hired another one. We, we got more customers, you know, so it's never just like, boom, there it is. So that's 2000 to like 2005, we started, uh, I, I brought on a couple of partners and, and we formed up and, and that was a really interesting time because I never had a partner prior to that. And so having partners was an interesting learning for me. Like you've got people that are hundred percent invested in the success of what you're doing and in a, in a deeper way than an employee, you know, as much as we like to think our employees are ride or die and many are, you know, uh, but but there, when you're a founder, you're really kind of in. And and so, you know, my co-founder, we, we huddled up. We started, you know, doing a lot of great work, building out products. And, yeah, we, we got to that point. We at, at the point of Hootsuite, we built up um, probably 10 different products within Invoke uh, along, you know, over the years and had better and better success with each one. We got our 10,000 hours in. And, um the, the we got to 2008 and social was just you know blowing up twitter was blowing up we realized we needed a better tool to help manage social media we started doing social media as a service and uh and and we really needed a better tool to manage that so that was the aha moment for hootsuite wow ryan diving into that a little bit deeper something that i and justin have pulled out for your story you had a good thing going, right? This agency is growing. You said you had launched almost a dozen products. We're building a team, almost 20, 21 employees, but you made the decision to perhaps risk good for great, for this rising tide, this potentially bigger wave. Talk to us for the next gen audience out there who maybe has a, a fine thing. Maybe they're happy in their job or in, in school, but they have that inkling of what could be. What is that decision-making framework that you apply that we can maybe pull out? 
Yeah, you know, so it's it's you get better pattern recognition in being an entrepreneur by doing it. And you know, I remember when I was in my paintball era, lying in bed and thinking because I just got I got high off of just business ideas. I love thinking about business. And so I would think about different business ideas I could do, how I could scale my, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, I, I did that. I did the restaurant. I did the agency. Within the agency, I did 10 other businesses. And then Hootsuite's there. And I'm like, I got good at discovering opportunity. And what I ultimately had to do after a while was tone it back and get good at focus. And so all I'd say is if for folks that are, you know, thinking about this, it's a muscle exercise it, do side hustle one, side hustle two, side hustle three, full-time hustle one, full, yeah, and, and just keep going with it because you build, you build on all your learnings. Um, you mentioned waves and I just want to like quickly touch on that because it's something I talk about all the time is, is finding a wave because I've done businesses without waves and I've done businesses with waves and it is much, much better to go and find that wave, right? And so we sit at the, you know, really interesting junction right now. Web 1, 99, kind of 2000 era. Web 2, 2005, 6, and, and social kind of advent of social. And uh, we're now sitting at Web 3, which is an incredible time of opportunity. I'm digging down that rabbit hole a lot right now. Um, and, and uh, you know, I'd say to people, like, go and find what is interesting you in emerging technology you can be uh, into it for months and be like the world expert uh, because nobody else has known this technology longer than you have and so it's something i really encourage people is like go and check out find where those waves are and get in front of those waves ryan a lot of takeaways that we can un unpack from what you're talking about the first is understanding that there's a lot maybe you want to do and for folks like us who have very quick brains and are moving you know at a million miles an hour you uncover a lot of opportunities but once you're really ready to, to put your focus on something, it's a sacrifice to limit down and hone in. Uh, at the same time, we're talking about ways, uh, I, I wanna stay on the focus and wave point and, and understand for our audience that you steer Hootsuite to become a B Corp status, which for those who don't know is some type of measure of social impact, a socially good um, organization. Did that level of uh, focus, did you ever have to decide and really think about, okay, we wanna focus on making money and profit, we wanna focus on serving our, the environment, the community that we're in, was that ever a, a decision at odds? Was becoming B Corp uh, and really steering Hootsuite just part of the, the long-term roadmap of how your plan was developing? Where did the social impact component become? And there's a lot in social impact you've continued to do in your career that we'll get to as well, but where did using Hootsuite as a B Corp and using it as a platform for social impact start to develop? Well, you know, I, I'd say so. Uh, Hootsuite, I, I led for 12 years. We scaled to, you know, uh, over a thousand employees, um, tens of millions of customers around the world, uh, you know, some, some pretty significant over, you know, 200 million in revenue. It's a, it was an incredible uh, journey, and, and um, I'm so grateful for that opportunity. Uh, B Corp is something that, um, we we did from day one in a lot of ways, and and it, I'd say it's easier for say a tech company to like to match up with the the principles and ethos of, of a B Corp than maybe say uh, you know a, a fossil fuels company or a tobacco company, etc. Like those are challenging you know businesses. I'd say um, you know a technology company you're not you're not overly producing a lot of you know. Uh, byproduct, et cetera. So, so you have a leg up a little bit on that. But, you know, in, in terms of um, how we thought about that, you know, when we got to kind of reviewing it and looking at it and considering it, we'd done a lot of the work already. Um, and so getting that certification was, you know, a continuance of that work, something we feel and the team felt so proud on. Um, and, and, you know, something that I think was aligning for ourselves and our customers. And so I would also argue that, like, in this day and age, like, you, you know, you, there, there's maybe some cost, but I think people in, in the world are looking for leadership from business because it, it, it's more rapid than government in many cases. It is, um, you know, uh, easy to find a brand that you align with and support that brand uh, so that they can continue on their journey and share their message. And so I, I think it's, it's a business imperative, not just, you know, a personal one. I love that, Ryan. Thank you for sharing that story and how these were values that, whether with the label, with the categorization or not, were core to you and that early team. It, tremendously powerful to let our young audience know 
it's not profit or impact, right? There mm -hmm. are ways where impact can generate profits and profit can be used to make impact. And that's such a powerful story coming from yourself. I want to really hone in on those early days at Hootsuite. Uh, the, the first time you actually make the product publicly available, you get hundreds of thousands of downloads, right? It's scaling, you're finding, oh my goodness, this thing is working. People maybe want this, but yet to turn on the profit side. So talk to us, Ryan, about how you thought of product versus business model and what the approach was to entering the market and building a for-profit company that actually had to make some money in this process. What were the early days like in that sense? Yeah, so uh, we, we built out and launched out a tool that we needed. Um, we had a vision of absolutely building out a SaaS freemium model product from day one. Um, the, the freemium out of the gates, all we, all we did was look at the competitive mix out there, look at the features they had and started implementing features that we thought were important and also borrowing, uh, you know, other features that, that we thought were valuable to our product from, from other, other, and, and it was, it was a land grab. Like we were up against funded companies, um, companies that were, you know, ahead of us in terms of technology, but you know, I love being an underdog personally because I can just look at who I want to take down, and we just like started charging towards that, right? And and that was uh, something that the whole team could get behind. And we looked at usage metrics, we looked at everything else, and we could just see our usage metrics because they were all transparent. We had sniffers set up, we could see you know the percentage of tweets that were coming out from ourselves versus any of our other competitors, and we could see our percentage market share just going, going, going. Um, you know, those those early days, the alignment that you get around that is is just uh, it's just so awesome. And uh, I, I think that, you know, we we continue to bootstrap for a year, six months in, you know, our, our it, it's it's a SaaS product. So it's just freemium model and go. And it, it remains to this day that you know we still have a freemium product um, as people get you know, more deep into the product, they need more features, functionality, increased scheduling, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we help them with that and, and, and you know, they, they end up uh, paying us some money for, for improving functionality and, and unlocking the product. Um, you know, I would say that, that this model, like you look at every successful SaaS company out there, like freemium model has demonstrated that it is an incredibly powerful model. We had hundreds of thousands of free users. Actually, we, we crossed over a million users at the point where we turned on our monetization, which was one year into the, the life of the company. And we looked at the usage behaviors of, of about 5% of our, our users, like the fat, the power 5%. And we just said, well, what are the, the power 5% doing? How many accounts do they have? How many team members do they have? How many messages per day? We looked at all these pieces of data and then we built packages and plans around that. And, you know, on D-Day, when we turned on our, our plans, there were 95% of people that were unaffected and 5% that were affected. And we talked to those 5% and the 5% were, were it, was, it was resoundingly positive because they said, hey, we know you got to have a business. We want to continue to support the product. And if you guys don't get paid, you're going to go out of business. And so, so everybody was, it was a win-win. And, you know, it's, it's so much about positioning, how you communicate it. And I feel like we really uh, walked nimbly through those, those, uh, those years. The amount of intentionality that was clearly behind many of the product decisions when you went to rolling out the paid, waiting to roll out the paid, watching the data, then reaching out to those customers, a very intentional approach to designing your product. But Dylan and I both know from, from just getting to spend some time researching Hootsuite, Ryan, that you took that same intentionality when you approached building the product of Hootsuite as an organization itself. Uh, you wanted to be intentional about the culture that you were designing, about the people that you were surrounding yourself with. And if I get this right, feel free to fact check us. One of the first hires that you make on your executive team is not a marketing visionary. It's not a sales visionary. It's an HR hire to help with culture and drive that forward. So feel free to fact check me on that as well. But how did you take that intentional approach on designing the organization, not just the product that everybody knows, but the business that's going to make it all possible? Well, you're going to laugh at this a little bit, but uh, I was, I, I, I like famously said back in the day that I never wanted to work at a company with an HR department. And, uh, you know, I, it just, it just always felt like too big and too corporate for me and everything else. Um, so I had a, a, a really amazing uh, young person came into my office uh, about a year and a, and a bit into the, the company. We closed our you know, series A and um, she said, you know, like, I want to, I want to 
you know, manager HR. And I said, well, that's, that's great. You don't really need an HR person, but you know, we could use an office manager and, a, and an exec assistant. And she said, great, I'll do it. And, you know, I worked with her um, hand in hand for, you know, a, a good amount of time. And um, I started kind of offloading, we got to about 60 people and I started offloading initial interviews to her because I just couldn't interview the flow of people. And um, so she started doing initial screenings and uh, lo and behold, you know, uh, after a while, we just were so sick, like, is this person the type of person that we want in the business? And, and she would have a great grasp on that. And working with her, you know, leading up as EA office admin really tightly, gave me a lot of confidence in her. So I'd say to anybody out there, like, if you're getting to that point of needing an HR team, that, that person at that juncture is so critical because they are your gatekeeper on the people they're going to follow. And we got to about 100 people and I had the moment, you know, every, every founder, when you get to a certain scale has this problem. It's like, there's somebody sitting in the, in the office and like, who's that guy? And, and guess what? That's the first interview that I didn't do initial, initial screen on or a screen at all. And, um, you know, as I say, you got to trust your gatekeeper. You got to work with them a lot. You got to get comfort. You got to have have all this respect with them. And then from there, uh, you know, a lot of the things we're not talking about. I started to become sold on our investment in people, our need for we we call it a people team. So I kind of cheated. We never did have an HR department, uh, but uh, yeah, we you know our people team, our investment in people became increasingly important for me to understand and and, and invest in. Ryan, we're on that team, the people team. Shout out to some of our people. We've got Jenna, Alexa, Malika, and Natasha who make it all possible. So hopefully we can learn a thing or two and, and find that true gem. If you still uh, if she's looking for a job, send her our way. Maybe we'll save that for off the camera though, Ryan. But I, I want to hone in on that, uh, what you are, the idea of a bottleneck that you were maybe spelling out. You are building this company. You're building 100 plus people in that first two couple of years. How were you able to instill a leadership style that allowed you to not have to let everything flow through you and, and stop and have the company's growth slow down, but still enable the founding CEO to be involved, to be high leverage, and to make your best impact? What ideas or frameworks for leaders out there, whether a founder or a leader of a team in, in the workforce, what can they be applying to get out of their own way? Yeah, so I, I think first off, um, all of my experiences leading up to Hootsuite, all of the generalist business experiences, so helpful. I think in, in business, it's like really important to know enough to be dangerous. Like you need to know a little bit about everything, right? And that that just helps you out so much. You know, you need to know a little bit about finance, how to read an income statement balance sheet really will help you out. You know, you gotta know some HR, you gotta know some marketing, you gotta know some sales, but you also have to be incredible at some things specifically. Like what are you the best at? And you have to have, focus and clarity and understanding on the thing that you are going to be amazing at and the things that you're not going to be amazing at. And uh, lo and behold, usually the thing that people want to get off of their plate are the things that they're not amazing at. And that's, I, I totally support that. Like I'm not the best at finance, but I know enough to be dangerous, but I hired a, you know, a, a great financial people and, and they are super happy doing what they need to do. Another thing I'd say just on that note is like, whatever you don't like doing the amazing thing about humans is there's somebody that actually likes doing that and and so like somebody gets pleasure in you know being an ops person or being a, you know a salesperson or being a you know a coder or whatever that is you don't have to be that and so find people that want to do that thing it sounds real simple but it, it's you know important so get those things you don't like doing off your plate get the focus on what you're amazing at and go and chase that thing um getting the stuff off your plate lets you do better at that and, and then I think those are the things that you reluctantly get off your plate. It should take a long time to, to like wrestle out of your cold, uh, cold dead hands uh, and, and, you know, to hand over to somebody again that you really trust. And clearly somebody has been wrestling you or you've been wrestling them. There's a lot of wrestling going on because Ryan, after nearly 12 years as CEO announcing a transition and to your own uh, next chapter chairman, after 12 years. Tell us about what's been going on. How long has this been planned for? Everybody knows Hootsuite and the Hootsuite story, and the Hootsuite story is Ryan Holmes. So seeing you move to your next chapter, I, we want to know the emotional experience, how long it was planned, what you're thinking uh, for all this going down. 
Yeah, well, you know, a, a 12-year run is an amazing run, quarter of my life, you know, a little, little uh, over a quarter of my life. So I'm, I'm absolutely so grateful for that journey and all of the amazing people, customers we worked with and, and team I, I had an opportunity to work with. It, it really um, was such a great chapter. I, you know, as I was looking at, uh, you know, I think, you know, with, with software, we have these options and, and usually it's a four-year earnout on your options. And so 12 years, I've done four tours of duty, four option cycles. And, and, you know, so I was looking at the next cycle and I was like, I just want to, like, I, I, I don't know if I want to do another cycle right now. If it's the right thing for me and the right thing for the business uh, as well. And, you know, I had a, a new daughter. I just had my number two. And um, I want to be there for them over the next period and, and to really be able to lean in. And I just know that, like, how involved, uh, you know, the, the business was and things that are coming up in the business that are going to keep us super, super busy. And so, you know, it, to me, it just made sense to uh, look at bringing in a, another leader. And so I spent uh, over a year building, uh, you know, a pipeline of executives that, that I thought could be a uh, great fit for the company. And a um, uh, little over a year ago now, we, we uh, brought in a new CEO who's been amazing. Uh, his name's Tom Kaiser. He's uh, ex um, Zendesk uh, COO, and it's been just a, you know a, a great leader on the, on the business, and and uh, continue to uh, keep running the race for us as I head of the baton. That's amazing. Again, clearly that intentionality shining through. Next gen fam, listening. This is not an easy decision, but Ryan is clear on his goals. He's clear on what he wants, where he's feeling, where he's coming from. And is making the decision based on that playbook, based on his playbook, not what the world wants for Ryan, but what Ryan wants for himself. So Ryan, with that in the last portion of our interview, I want to turn the camera a bit to Ryan Holmes, the guy behind Hootsuite, and get to hear some of the strategies that you employ to be your best self. 12 years, as you said, a quarter of your life. That is half our life almost. That is a long time. You're clearly a long-term thinker. What were some of the tips or the, the bodily uh, strategies you apply to be your best self over the long haul of building a billion dollar business? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. You, you got to take care of yourself. I, you know, I, I don't think that you, I could have done it had I not, um, you know, done the investments that I had in, in both mental and physical health. Um, you know, I, I had a back injury a few years ago, which, which just kind of started me on this journey of discovery for, you know, myself, my back health led me to yoga, uh, which led me to a whole, you know, I think transformation in terms of, uh, you know, my body and, and longevity on my body, how I think about it. Um, you know, yoga has a, a moving meditation aspect. So love that. Um, but yeah, you know, you got You got to take that time. It's like, it's a very addictive thing being in a business. Um, but your, your brain's got to turn off and, and not be thinking business. You know, sometimes the, the expression, you know, the great ideas come in the shower. you got to have that time where you're just thinking about something else. So your brain can kind of low level process these, these problems that you're having. And if you're just sitting there in front of your screen, like, you know, doing, doing 80 hour weeks, like you're, I would argue that your quality, your output, output quality really does go down. And so you know, as hard as it is, take that time uh, and, and kind of get away, give yourself a break, whatever your, your your release is. It's hopefully you can find something a bit physical, a bit mental to, to give you that, uh, that release in your business. Brian, thank you for telling our audience to take care of themselves. We know that it's important, but I got to say, you're telling us to take care of ourselves. You're building Hootsuite and the way that you're distracting yourself or getting your mind off things you started an incredible organization called League of Innovators, so we got to talk about it. Uh, you, you have more hours uh, than others, maybe, because your passion, clearly, you can't stop yourself. League of Innovators, an incredible organization, one that Next Gen we've collaborated with, we've looked up to for many a time, many in our community. So when did League of Innovators become part of your, uh, you know, part of your mind and how you need to bring this into the world with all the priorities that you got going on? You made a conscious decision that this is too important to ignore so what what was going down in your world? Why are you so fired up about what you're building there? Well, you know, I, I mentioned I talked to entrepreneurs and I'm so passionate about entrepreneurship. I believe and, you know, so that's why this coming on, joining you guys was a slam dunk. I love entrepreneurs. I love 
you know, the, the value wealth creation, every single thing that you touch, you know, we're, we're speaking on right now, all this technology was built by entrepreneurs who had this idea. And so the value wealth creation prosperity that comes out of that, I think it changes lives. And so I, I, I want to see more Hootsuites in Canada. I want to see, you know, more prosperity because I think everybody wins. And so that's, you know, the idea uh, League of Innovators, we, we started, um, you know, a few years ago now, and it's, it's about, you know, that, that discussion around young entrepreneurs. There's so many young entrepreneurs. I started my first business when I was 16, 35, Hootsuite, it gets on the scene. So there's 20 years there. And, and my thing is, how can we collapse that 20 years now? Um, and so, you know, collapsing that down, how we giving a, a boot camp and an on, onboarding for young entrepreneurs uh, into entrepreneurship is, is the goal of League of Innovators. And I also am doing something kind of fun that I should mention to your audience also, uh, which is called Kernel. And uh, this is a fun little project. I know you mentioned Joel, he's working with me on it. Um, but we built out a, a little platform for people to share business ideas and get feedback on business ideas. So it's K-E-R-N dot A-L. Uh, we'll get a, an invite code to your uh, to your audience. Maybe we can put in the show notes. Um, it's in private beta, but it's a lot of fun. We've had, you know, 4,000 people sign up in the private beta for it and thousands of ideas submitted. And it's it's something that doesn't exist out there that I think hopefully is really helpful to your community as they're thinking about their next ideas. Ryan, I can personally attest that I must say for the audience, Justin and I, we are big fans. We're users of every product that Ryan's touched from League of Innovators to Kernel to Hootsuite, chat to our social team. But we love that it's bringing people who are thinking like entrepreneurs together. Ryan, to your point, not everybody has to be an entrepreneur perhaps, but if we can get those behaviors, those actions, that mindset, then that's the momentum that will lead to this incredible impactful change. Ryan, I wanna ask you though, you've given incredible, incredible advice. You're speaking to tens of thousands of those next gen entrepreneurs. What's some bad advice that you hear that we could put a stop to right now? You got the mic, you're on the stage. What do you want people to know? Hey, don't do that thing. Well, you know, th this is funny because this is the opposite question you always get, you, you know, the, the, the closer question, which is like, what's your best advice for people? So thanks for that. This is this is a, a fun one. Yeah, so so bad advice. Um, look, you know, we talked about just, just taking the leap, whether it's a side hustle or whatever else, like, you're going to hear a lot of no's, you know, from people like, is this a good idea? Is it, you know, should you be doing this? Like, look, make sure that you're not in a compromised position. If you have like, you know, a ton of, you know, overhead of debt or other things that you got obligations, like maybe it's not the right thing for you. But I would say that for most people, you can figure out a side hustle and get something going and get into it. So please like, you know, don't listen to those voices on, on people saying like, you know, don't go for it. Um, in terms of lessons, you know, I think that the hardest lessons you get, the ones that leave scars are really important for you. Like most cases, they're really important for you in terms of like pattern recognition and learnings for down the road if you treat them as that. Um, so what did you learn from this? How, what is the, you know, the benefit? How can you grow out of this hard situation that you're in? You know, we've, we've just gone through a pretty tough year for so many people, but so many people have created opportunity and prosperity for themselves in this period. And as I say, there's so much opportunity out there in the world right now. Um, everything is transforming. There's a lot of disruption that's going on. Web3 is coming up um, and, and a whole bunch of you know, ways that people can really get involved in that. Um, so you know, go for it. Next Gen Fam, Ryan's telling you there has never been a better time to get in the game, make that jump, just get started. Ryan, before we let you go, we hear that for you, happiness is adventure. You have, you're quoted saying, give me a surfboard, give me a secluded beach. Now you got a family that's growing. What's next for Ryan? Where are your energies focused? Where can our audience best get in touch with you? What platforms are you on uh, that you want our next gen fam to, uh, to be paying attention to? Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to a lot of podcasts. I'm, I'm, I'm basically, you know, Web3 has been out there. Like Web3, the, 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 core, you know, technology, blockchain, crypto, um, DAOs, you know, all of this. It, I, I knew that it was kind of out there, but when I, you're doing your day job, sometimes you can't like get up, the, get up the curve on it. So I've been really blessed with having, you know, uh, any brief spare moment I have, I'm just like learning, learning, learning. And it's so exciting for me because 
back to 99, it has that feel. Back to 2005, it has that feel. Um, and so there feels like there's a real, you know, everywhere I look, I see opportunity in this. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to start sharing even more ideas on kernel for things, the opportunities, the areas of opportunities that I think people can go and chase. Um, you know, platforms, I, I met, you know, we talked about kernel. I'm spending a lot of time there. Um, I'm spending a lot of time on podcasts. There's, there's a, a, a ton of great content. Again, best time to be an entrepreneur in the world, like content. You can talk, listen to the best speakers, the smartest people on the planet and, and, and hear what their thoughts and perspectives are on anything. It's just like unlock for people. So, you know, um, I, I, I think that, you know, get get educated, get like, you know, down the rabbit hole, find the people you think are interesting and just go keep chasing, you know, what's going on there because it's, it's all out there. The information's free. Incredible. A billion dollar business in and Ryan is still committed to learning. And that is the reason, one of many, that he will continue to find that success in whatever he's touching. Ryan Holmes, we are so grateful for you joining us on Momentum Audio. Thank you for taking the time to share your wisdom and experience with the Next Gen community. Absolute pleasure, guys. It was so much fun. Hope everybody had some value out of that and uh, really enjoyed it. Grateful for you, man. What <laughs> Ryan Holmes, oh, goodness. co founder, CEO, now transitioned to his next chapter. Dad. Incredible story. Father started so many businesses when he was young, pizza, paintball, and even in his digital media agency, he's a, he, we asked him, born, bred, how, entrepreneurs. He is very clear that it is the mindset. An entrepreneur is not the job title. It is the mindset. Ryan is applying the entrepreneurial mindset to what he's doing. And he's telling young entrepreneurs, number one piece of advice, get in the game. I'm going to leave this interview focused on Ryan's intentionality, the way that he approached everything in life, whether he thought this was the thing, not he was focused on learning. He was curious from the pizza biz, the paintball biz, building Hootsuite, now in his new ventures, the intentionality to say no to good, to go for great, to go away from the business, to focus on family, knowing what you need. That is powerful, Next Gen Fam. Make sure we're honing in on our core values all the time. Next Gen Fam, as always, we want to know what you like, who we want to hear from, what else can we unpack for you? Keep building your business, keep building your life, keep making it happen. Now that's momentum. Much love, y'all. Looking forward to uh, seeing you again soon. We'll catch you soon.